Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Magali. I'm an Oracle Apex developer. And today in this tutorial, we're going to be talking about Facetta Search, a feature available in Oracle Apex. So let's go ahead and dive in. What is Facetta Search? We typically see Facetta Search on e-commerce websites like eBay, Amazon, and other e-commerce websites where the user can refine results by price, range, year, color, etc. So it becomes easier to browse through the items. Now, for this tutorial, our use case is to create a facet search for a mock-up Adidas website by providing the user with the ability to search by sport. Um, in this case, it would be gym, training, running, hiking, outdoors, etc. Um, also by gender, collection, price, and year. That way we can take a look at the different facets available in the facet search region. So let's go ahead and take a look at our Apex application. Here's our application. I have created it using several shoe styles from Adidas, which will be available to download in the description for you to try this tutorial. Apex provides us with the option of creating a facet search using the wizard and can be customized as we need. However, in this tutorial, we will take a look at how to do it manually. That way we can take a look at all the different facets available. So let's go ahead and edit our page and get started. We're going to go to the page on home and change the appearance to left side column. The way on this left column, we can drag our facet search region um, and display the facets in there. Now for the facet region, we're going to select the title to be search. And then for the source, this filter region is where the facet search will obtain its information from. Now, uh, something to keep in mind is that if you have different regions, you cannot select multiple for just one facet search. If you have multiple regions, you will need to create a different facet search for each of them. Now, in this case, for our filter region, we're going to select all products since that's our report card. And on template, I'm going to change it from a standard to blank with attributes and disable the region display selector. Go ahead and save it and we run it. And as you can see, automatically, the facet search creates a search facet. The search facet allows uh, the user to perform text-based search on the result set. Um, so in what this means is that we can only look for, the user can only look for bar car um, attributes or Oracle text if you have an index um, specified in your table. Now to take a look at how our table looks, uh, let's go really quick to SQL workshop to the other browser. You can see that we have product ID, pro name, brand ID. We have the image URL, the product code, the description, listing price, tax, and gender, and the release date of the shoes. Now in the search facet, we can only look for bar car. So in this case, uh, we can look for product name, uh, the product code, description, gender, and tax. Now, uh, on tax, how the data looks is like we have the product name, in this case, Agrasi Ultra Trail, and then we have the brand ID that is a reference to the brand table that we're going to take a look at it in a minute. And we have the description for each of the shoes, listing price, and also on tax, we have what is it used for, hiking, outdoors, um, sportswear. We're going to take a look at how uh, the facility search uses these tags uh, to create the facets. Now, uh, going back to this, um, in the search facet, you can select the, you can specify which database, which columns you want to use as a source. Uh, so in this case, if we only want the user to be able to look for gender, then we will specify the gender column in the source section. In this case, I want the user to be able to look through product name, brand, gender, uh, colors, etc. Another facet that we can create, uh, there are different UI options. You can have a checkbox group, you can have an input field, radio group, range, select list. Now, something to keep in mind as well is that the search can only be once per region for per facet search. You cannot have more than one search in your region. 
Now, the next one we're going to create will be for the tags. Uh, so we can take a look how that works. So for that, we're going to select a uh, checkbox group. And for the label, we're going to name it sport. Since it's, we're making a reference to hiking, outdoors, uh, running, etc. Now, this show label for current facility means that it will show the actual label on before the different options. Now, for the type, you can select a list of values. In this case, um, in our audio browser, you can see that on our tags, we have hiking, outdoors, and then we have it divided by a column. Uh, you can have more than once, and what we're going to do is that once we select distinct values on the list of values, it will get each of them individually and show it as a list. Just to talk a little bit about those facet attributes, these will show, compute counts will show how many uh, occurrences are. If you don't have any uh, country, you can hide it, disable it, or show at the end. Uh, you can sort by top counts. Uh, you can also so show the selected one to be displayed first. Um, and you can also give the option to show a chart. I'll leave it on for right now, just for you to see it. And in here, you specify the database columns where these facet is getting this information from. In this case, we're obtaining it from tags, which is a bar car. Now that we have that, we go to a decision where it says multiple values. On type, we're going to say the limited list. And we're going to, here's where we are specifying that each of our tags is divided by a column. I don't have any spaces between them, so I will just leave this off. And then uh, the filter combination, you can select between OR or AND, depending on what you need. In this case, we just need an OR. Because uh, it could be hiking or outdoors, we could be running or sports wear, etc. Okay, let's go ahead and save it and run it. So now you can see here in the sports, we have outdoors, and it also shows the uh, the counts, hiking, lifestyle, sneaker, running. All these are coming from my tags over here. So as you can see, it's very useful if you have multiple tags that you want. Uh, you have it as a list and Apex will do the work for you. But now that we have the tags, I will also like to add another facet for the gender. So for this one, let's just name it PH1 gender. Um, and for this one, the type I'm gonna select would be radio group, just so that we can take a look at the different facet. And yes, the name will be gender. We do want to show the label for the current facet, so we're just going to leave it on. You have the option to also hide the radio buttons if you would like. In this case, um, we're just going to leave it off. You can um, select on the list of values based on a query, a study values, a function, or again, a distinct value list. So in this case, I'm going to select a short component. Um, and we're going to select gender. For gender, I just have a static component, which is men, then returns men if it's women, women, unisex, unisex, depending on what the user selects. You have the option to include a no option, but in this case, we do not need it. Just going to leave it like that. Now, for this, I do not want to show a chart, so I'm just going to remove it. And I'm just going to leave the accounts um, selected. I do want it to be collapsible. What this means is that when you click here, it can be collapsible. And then the database column is correct since it's a bar car. Go ahead and save it and run it. So now you have gender. So if I click men, you can see that only the men's shoes are being shown. And if I select men and also hiking, then I will only get five results. But it's a one running, but it's still one man. Then I will show all the running shoes plus the men. So we have eight for men and um, eight in total for hiking and running together. Now you also have the show to show more, show less. So it's going to show five by five since that's what I selected um, right over here, maximum display entries. That's just how many you want to show. Okay, so that will be for gender. Now let's create another facet 
And for this one, we're gonna do collection. So for that one, I'm gonna do checkbox group as well. And for the list of values, again, I'm gonna select share component and select collection. Now I do want to compute the count, show counts. And yeah, I do want to sort by top counts so we can see that behavior. And I do not want to show a chart. So I'm just gonna disable that. Then the database column is in this case, no, correct, because the database column we're making reference to is brand ID. Uh, to show you the table, let me pull it out right here. It's right here where we have region essentials, so we're making a reference to this ID. So in this case, since specified on our port, we are making reference to the brand ID, so we need to use it. So we cannot... Um, choose a database column that is not specified in the report. So you don't have to necessarily show it in the report, but it needs to be on the code so you can make a reference to it. So on collection, again, we're going to change this to the database column, which is brand ID. And the data type for that will be number. By default, um, Apex selects on the data type a bar car. Uh, so just something to pay attention to uh, that you probably need to change it um, if you have another data type. Yeah. Save it and run it and see how that works. So in here you have the different collection. You have Terex, 510. I remove this. You can also select clear here so it's just easier. Um, if I select hiking, then it will only show the collections where that appears. Since we only have 10 hiking, as you can see, Terrace has eight and 510 has two. That accounts for the 10 hiking shoes. Otherwise, if we remove that, then it will just show all the collections and then we can go from there. Like originals, we have three. And if we specify women, then we'll only get one result. Let's create another facet. And in this case, I'm going to do it by price. Um, so for this one, we're going to do a range facet. Select range over here. So the range facet allows you to filter the result list for values between a lower and upper boundary. Um, so you have predefined ranges to pick from. Uh, so if let me just change the label right here to price, and the same for the titles. You know what we're talking about. Uh, so to do that, what we're gonna do is go into the list of values and select static values. And then in here, you will display uh, the, the values that you want, like under $50 or between 50 and 100. And then we need to return the value that we need. And so now there's a special syntax in here. Um, the list of values, return value needs to use the pipe symbol, the little line character to separate the upper and lower values. So for that, uh, let's start with this one, the display value, and we're gonna do under 50, or if you want just the letters under $50. Now the return value in here is where we're gonna use our pipe character and just write 50, no spaces in between. Now, on the next one, let's say we want from $50, sorry, $50 to $100. Then on the return value, I will type 50, which is my lower boundary, and then I'm going to separate it with the pipe character and write 100. And then I'm going to add a couple more for 100 to 120. And again, 100 pipe character and 120. No spaces in between. Actually, let's just do 200. Just to... All right, and then <clears throat> we're gonna select from 200 uh, to 300. And the last one will be uh, greater than $300. And in this case, it will be backwards. The pipe column will be at the end since that's the 
like we're saying the lower boundary is 200 and I wanted to go over that. In this case, it, since it was under 50, we needed to select, a, put a um, type the pipe character before the 50. Okay. And the sort, you can make it sort of runtime. Um, I usually disable this option. So I'm gonna go away. okay. Then save it. We want it to be zero count entries. I'm just gonna disable it so you can see how it works. Um, I do not want to show a chart, so let's disable that. And I do want to make it collapsible. Again, on the source, uh, like I was mentioning you, uh, by default, it adds the database data type, data type to bar car. So in this case, price is a number, so we're just gonna change that. Okay, so we save it and we run it. We'll see our prices here. So let's just clear all this. And say we select 100 to 200, you will see your 13 results right over here. And if we select men, then we only get nine results. Unisex, well, we only have one. Now, if I have any issues over 300, I do not. Um, <clears throat> and I do not have any issues in the range 200 to 300. What about 100? Yeah, we do have. So there is not a shoe that is unisex and is between the price 200 and 300. So it's a pretty convenient for anyone looking for it. Okay, so now let's add the last facet. In this case, we're gonna do the release year of the shoe. So let's call it release year. Uh, again, the type in this case will be range. And I do want to show the label. And under list of values, we're gonna do the exact same thing we did under price, which will be aesthetic values. And on the study values, there's a specific format we use for dates. Um, the return value format mass needs to be year, the four digits, month, day, then the hours in 24 format, 24 hour format, minutes and seconds. Uh, you need to use this return value for mass mask uh, for your value. So for example, we have before 2015. We will need to use this format, so I'm just gonna put it here so you can see it. So it'll be before, seen before, pipe character, 2015, then the month January, the 1st of January, then since I'm doing the year, uh, the time I'll do zero, zero, because I want it to be at the beginning of the day, zero for minutes and zero for seconds. Uh, the same goes for the next one. So let's say before, I mean, 2015, 16 and 2017. So again, we're going to use the same format, but the only difference is that in this case, we're going to use the pipe character for beginning. So actually, uh, this will be 2015 and 2016, since we are just did before. So 2015, is our lower boundary, upper boundary, and again, the same for my mask. The same goes for 2017 and 2018. Okay, and then the next one will be 2019 to 2020. And the last one will be 2021 and 2022. 2021, January 1st, 00. Zero, zero, zero. Five character, and then we're gonna do 2022 <clears throat> January. First, zero hours, zero minutes, and zero seconds. All right, and then I'm gonna go ahead and turn off sort of around time. Now we're gonna leave this as it is, except that we're gonna turn off show charts since I do not want to show a chart in this case. All right, so just to show you what happens if we have an error on the source on the database column. Right now we have it as release year and we have the data type as bar card. Again, we're using date, so we need to change that to date. Now, um, let's see what happens when we do this. So if we save it and run it, it will tell you this error that release year referenced by the facet is not available. What this means is that on our products uh, report, we have release date since that's the name of the column. 
uh, but in our fase we call it release year, which is non existent. So always we need to uh, make a reference, uh, put it in our query, the column which we're going to be making a reference in our facet. So for that, let us go and change the database column to release date. And that should solve the problem. We really need to pay attention to the database columns and the, and the data type. All right, so right over here, we can select, we have 2018, 2020, we have three shoes really nice shoes and then if we want it also to be between the price range of 50 to 100 and apparently there's only for women as you can see here the counts actually help you know if there is available for something else and let's say we want to use the search facet just to see how that looks um let's say let's check out prime blue and see okay there's nothing called prime blue so it's right prime okay and then we can see the results for uh, the shoes that contain the word prime. Um, if I were to put hiking, let's see if that shows up. Yep, uh, we can see the hiking shoes right here. We should have 10 results. Yep, as you can see here, we have 10. So just make sure that. Now, how the chart looks, it will be like this. So we click on chart, sports. Uh, we can see how many are for each of them, the counts and also the sport that we're making reference to. You can also have um, you provided with the option of doing a pie chart, uh, which is convenient if uh, you require it in your app. Okay, all right, and then <clears throat> let's just take a quick look to these facet search region attributes. So for this one, we have batch facet changes. So by default, it is turned off. Uh, the, the way it works is that the this attribute controls when the facets and the report refresh. So after you make a change to one of the facets, then it will refresh the report. Now, if you turn it on, um, a button will be display. And after, after the facets have been um, selected and clicking the button will make the refresh. So normally I like to keep it on off uh, since I wanted to do it automatically in the moment. For the show current facets, this one, uh, attribute, this attribute controls whether the active facets that are, are being displayed. So for example, in this case, I do not have it activated, so you can see it. So let's go ahead and activate that. Uh, click yes. Then in here, it will appear the, fac the facet that we're looking for. So sportswear, they will pop in in there. 510 so you don't have to scroll down all the way to see it it looks something like this all right so that would be for show current facets you can do a yes no or selector in this case you will specify where you want the text to show where you want those current facets to show um so for example if you were to go to a region you can add it you can add a uh, an ID to it, and then uh, put the name in here as well. This guy, I'm just gonna click yes, so like that. Now the show to the row count, uh, if we activate, you can see right here, it will show how many rows are being selected for hiking. Now for this, you can also put the label for it. So it's a shoes count. It will change it to shoes counts. Now, in this case, I do not like it, so I'm just gonna click no at the moment. Now, this is how you want to show the charts if you want it in a dialogue or you don't want it at all, or if you want it in a specific place. Also, um, if you want your tags to appear and your facets to appear in different order, let's say you want gender to be the first option. The only thing you need to do is drag it and place it on top of the tags. Like if you want gender and then you want collection to appear, you just need to rearrange them and that will solve the issue. So that's how it works on a facet search. So we created a mockup for an Adidas uh, website. Uh, again, the facet search um, allows you to provide fully functional facet navigation with little effort, like it's super straightforward and super easy to use. 
um, and it does all the work for you. All right, so that's all for this tutorial on facet search. We took a look at the different facet attributes, um, how to create the facet search manually, and also talk a little bit about the different UI options that you have available in the facet search. If you have any comments or any other topics you would like me to cover, please leave it in the comments below. All the, uh, all the, the base application and the scripts will be available for you to download from the description if you want to follow along with this tutorial. And that'll be all for today and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.